Hi ladies, I am Shannon Mitchell, a Black millennial business owner, the founder of Shalo Glow LLC, an all-natural product manufacturer. I'm a champion for your natural self-care, sustainable business care, and overall intentional wellness. Hey y'all, I'm Christine Gotro, a white social justice advocate, an international speaker, coach, published author, and dancing social worker who helps you upgrade yourself and community care. Together, we are a podcast rooted in the eight dimensions of wellness and the co-founders of Women Connected in Wisdom community. And we like to get together every week with special expert guests for intentional conversations about how to be wise in business, relationships, and wellness. How do we do this? Yes. So important. Just thinking about how do we do it in our whole authentic, perfectly imperfect selves? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) How are you doing? Oh my gosh, I'm doing so well. I am, you know, I was telling somebody the other day, well, it's a miracle, you know, just being home for a Mm -hmm. month in a row Mm -hmm. and catching up with myself and really, I don't know. We've just been having so much fun with the work we've been doing and looking at this year and what's happening. And I don't know, I love meaningful work and I just am feeling really fulfilled. It's just such a kind of an old fashioned word, but I'm just feeling happy and fulfilled and full and. We should bring it back. Fulfilled. Yeah. (laughs) Bring it back. And I love it. You know, today we're talking about social wellness. And when I think about, sometimes the disconnect that you can feel between what you feel like you're supposed to be doing and what you are doing and where you see your purpose being, you know, I love that. I I feel the same way. Like no matter how tired I am, the emergencies that we mitigate, no, no matter anything, it's going to be worth it. I love it. I love talking to each guest. I love sharing the resources. I love knowing the, um, the positive impact that we're having. And that's, that's where I live with it, you know? So I definitely hear what you're saying. Well, I was just thinking as you asked me, like, I'm, I always question myself, right? It's like, I always say something, I'm like, oh, is that what you really meant? Is that, and what I realized is time doesn't heal everything. We know that to be true, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes it takes therapy, which our next guest will have some input on that, but you know, it takes tools and resources. And, but I do think with grief and loss, especially time does ease things. Right. And I think that may be part of what I'm feeling is an easing of some of the intensity of last year. Right. That makes sense. Which I'm grateful for because who knows what this year is going to bring. So (laughs) it's like getting to catch our breath and have some fun. And yeah, I love that. Yeah. I love that for you, especially with like social wellness. You know, what's been coming up for me is our conversation with Maya and we talked about higher education, right? And seeing what's going on with Black women, seeing just the environment, seeing what's going on in general in the workplace. And for me, when I think about women connected in wisdom or even people connected in wisdom, because it's not always women for me at work. Sometimes it is men and I have Mm -hmm. my key people who are like my social anchors. No, you're not crazy. This is what you do next. Or you did the right Mm -hmm. thing or good job. I would do this next time, you know, and it's really important for me to have those in, in every environment that I'm in, um, you know, to make sure that I'm seeing things straight and I can come as my best self. Right. I think about when I think about social wellness, I think that may be why I'm feeling so fulfilled lately too, is because I've been home long enough to see my people. Right. And to like, yes, it was a work day last Friday, but we got to hang out and, you know, eat a meal together. And, and I think about, we've had game nights at my house recently Mm because, you know, the kids have been home on winter break and I just, the things that bring us joy and community and connect us. I really, yeah, I'm I'm grateful. I love it. Connected in community. I know we talk about it all the time, you know, but just like we sometimes, or really every show now, talk about the part of the definition that stands out to us for social wellness, connected in community has been 
huge on being intentional on who's in the community. You know, why as I venture longer into these businesses, I'm really intentional about being surrounded by entrepreneurs and people who have done stuff that we look forward to doing and that can coach and help through different situations. Mm, I like that. Should I read the definition for our listeners about what we're talking about today? So y'all, social wellness, as we define it at Women Connected and Wisdom, is about the ability to nurture ourselves, others, and our relationships with healthy boundaries. It includes balancing, which we always put in quotes, (laughs) the other seven dimensions of wellness, and actively participating as an interdependent being in the web of life. Uh So many things. I mean, we were just talking to one of our guests that's going to come in in March about the interdependentness. Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. so social wellness is who you know, whether it's job applications or resources that we share here, whether it's, you know, just as a sounding board, that social wellness is so important. What sticks out to you in this definition this week? Well, it actually, when I read it, it took me to a story. So I think I told you this, but I can't remember. Okay. So as some of my listeners know, I moved my parents last year from Texas to Colorado for my dad's rehab. And my dad is a farmer from Texas. That is, you know, he was a teacher his whole career and he's been an organic farmer. And when he retired, he has a small organic farm. And this year there is a bumper crop of pecans. And he called me up fretting about it and wanting me to fly to Texas to pick up pecans to bring him in Colorado, which, you know, that wasn't going to happen right away, right? Right. But I think about social wellness and his neighbors went over and picked up pecans and shipped him pecans They so he could be cracking pecans and having something to do in the rehab center. And then one of his neighbor's daughters now goes to college, not far from where my parents live. And when she was home from the holidays and drove back, she brought him more pecans. Thank you. And I just think, right. I think about the sweetness of it, but I think it's social wellness, which is leading to his emotional and mental wellness. Like I just think about that interconnectedness. And that balancing of them, right? Because he's away from his people in Texas, but they are still holding that connection and fostering that connection, which is so beautiful. Yes. And I love that it didn't have to be you, you know, that there were other (laughs) options, that there were, you know, options that fell in the place and and weren't as taxing as it would have been for you, for them. And, you know, it could be win, win, win all over the place. Right. I just, when he called me, I had this vision of me getting on a plane with a suitcase full of pecans mm-hmm. and TSA opening it up. <laughs> Ma'am, <laughs> what are you doing? What's going on? So I have a question. What is a bumper crop? Is that on the outside, like a, a bumper on the... um? No, a bumper plane? crop is like a big crop. It's a, it's lingo for like, it is like, it's a, it's a big year. It's a good year. So like in most crops, they rotate, like Mm -hmm. sometimes it'll be an okay year. Sometimes it'll be a really bad year. Sometimes it'll be a really excellent year. And with pecans, if I remember correctly, because you know, I've been, I've been off the farm for a couple of years, but I think it's about every three years that there's a bumper crop. And it means that there's just pecans everywhere. Like, I mean, there, and you know, it makes a difference on how hard the freeze was, how much water there is, all the things about nature. But we call it a bumper crop when it's just like an extraordinary amount and yeah. you're hustling to get it all in. So okay. that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. Well, we were having such a good conversation before the show. I'm excited to get into this conversation with our guests. Are you okay if I read? Absolutely. Let's do it. Stage? Okay, ladies. So today we are talking to Chanel Sarwin. And Chanel Sarwin is a licensed mental health professional turned coach who is committed to supporting amazing women and achieving holistic success and wellness in their relationships, mind, body, business, and faith. Please help us welcome to the stage Chanel. Woo-hoo! Hi. Hi. Thank you guys so much for having me. I'm so excited to join you guys. Absolutely. We're delighted for you to be here. And you're coming to us from Houston, Texas today, right? 
I am. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> love it. I love it. That is where I was before I moved to Atlanta. And so um have a lot of dear friends and people there. Glad you could join us. Yes, yes, I remember you sharing that. I am glad I could join you guys as well. I'm really excited. Good. Yes. So today, Chanel, we're talking about heal, dream, and launch. Mm-hmm. Right. So as somebody in the mental health industry, can you tell us about your transition from helping people heal to helping them heal, dream, and then launch into their projects and businesses? Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, I still work in the capacity of a therapist. I uh, now work specifically with couples Mm -hmm. and I have shifted to coaching uh, of individuals, especially targeted at women, Um, just because I I recognize that um, there's a level of flexibility that I wanted to be able to approach my work with in support of women and coaching really afforded that to me. And so um, what I find is that I think even before um, coming on, uh, we were having a discussion backstage and talking about the idea that most people reach out for therapy because they're thinking about, I need to heal from something. There's something that's been going on in my life and I'm noticing now there's a problem. Um, And so I'm wanting to kind of target that and work through that. And then once they get to that place where they feel like, hey, now I'm good they kind of venture out and maybe sometimes look for support in another avenue to take them the next step further. And I found that um, in my work, I'm really uh, centered around the idea of supporting people in their healing journey to get to a place to actually be able to recognize that dream inside of them. And so in order for us to really access that dream, we do have to pass through healing. um, And then it's the support of helping them launch into that. Now that I'm able to think about dreaming again or having a vision for my life, how do I take the steps to actualize that vision? Right. So can we talk more about launching? When I hear you say launch, I'm thinking about add key performance indicators, right? What are the conversions? What do I, what are the steps that I need in my launch? When you say launch, what are you thinking about specifically? So I definitely think about the practical pieces of that as well. And I'm thinking about that in um, specifics to each individual, because the steps that may be needed for one person to launch are completely different for another person to launch, depending upon what that dream is. Um, Because remember, um, you know, even as we dream, I mean, that dream looks so personal for each of us. And for some people, they're in a space where maybe dreaming is shifting into the space now that I want to have a family. I want to spend more time focusing in, in um, this arena of my life, the personal. For some people, it is a specific business endeavor. For some people, it's shifting um, you know, professional gears. Maybe they have a different path that they want to go down. So there's not necessarily like a ABC step um, you know, approach. It's more right. of working with every individual, specifically where they are, Um, and as we get more insight into where you're going, Mm -hmm. now we are able to apply, um, the specific steps for getting you to where you're trying to get to. Right. I love that you say that I'm reading this book on sales and it talks about how selling is not a, like you said, a one, two, three, just in order. It's a process. And sometimes you go back and forth and you have to keep the dialogue going, you know, and with your heal dream launch, for me, when I think about dream, I also think about you, Christine, right? And how we dream about what we want for women connected in wisdom and where we see things going and how we've realized those things. And also how we help people balance the the celebratory wins and make sure that you make space to celebrate what you just did, right? And also acknowledging the grief and the things that we're going through so we can really heal and unpack and continue to dream for ourselves and launch it to the things that we have next. Mm -hmm. Right? I think it's the whole package. Yeah. Right? I think, Chanel, when you talk about like being a relationship coach or therapist, um, I mean, I'm personally of the belief that everything comes down to relationships, <laughs> whether it's the relationship with ourselves, the relationship with our partners, whether they're our romantic partners or our business partners, or, you know, that if our relationships are healthy and we're healthy with ourselves, then 
we can do what we set out to do, right? But if we, if there's a problem or an issue, getting support and help with that, I think it's necessary. And I think you and I talked um, when we were doing our coffee and chat, I was also trained as a clinical social worker and therapist and moved into the coaching field. And I um, I think it's so necessary and, and so needed for folks and getting over the stigma and the, what used to be old school. And I think some people still have it in some regards of, you know, oh, I should be able to do this by myself. I, mm-hmm. I don't need help or, or I don't, you know, they don't want to be seen as how um, I'm even losing the word, you know, well, there's Maybe stigma around it or incapable right? of doing right? what you need to do. Yeah. And you would think in 2024 that there's not stigma around it, but I think in some ways there still are like people are like, Oh, you know, and I'm the believer. Of course, you know, I'm in this field and I don't know about you, but when I went through my training years ago, like one of the first things my mentors and coaches said, and my mentors and professors said was get a therapist, like work Mm -hmm. on your Mm -hmm. own stuff before you hold space for somebody else. So, you know, I've been doing that for years and love it. And, and the person I am today because of it. Mm-hmm. And I often say, um, somebody asked me the other day, I can't remember who asked me, my husband and I, Joe and I've been married 30 years and we're celebrating 30 years this year. And somebody said, um, how are y'all still together? Or how do you, I can't remember how they asked your question. And it was really funny. It was somebody that was much younger than me. And I was just like, oh, therapy, by all means. <laughs> <laughs> It's important. Relationships are tough, even Mm -hmm. with really good people, because of the stressors of the world, I think. And especially if we haven't unpacked what we were taught as kids or, you know, sometimes we may not have had good models for some of this stuff. Mm -hmm. So I think I went off on a tangent there, but that was everything I was thinking about when you were talking about your intro. Hey, hey you know, I'm a, what I'm going to say, as a podcaster, you're allowed to talk a lot, okay? So right? <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I was tracking with it. Absolutely. Okay. Good. Yeah, we're with you. What yes. Did you, did you have anything to say to any of this stuff she said, you know? Yeah, you know, honestly, I think both of you guys touched on something that made me consider um, one of the big focuses in the work I do is the idea of being versus doing. Um, So not focusing so much on the doing. And unfortunately, you know, sometimes I find that in uh, the field that we work in um, or are familiar with that it's this idea of hey, these are the steps that you take and you apply these things and this is what solves your issue or, you know, um, whatever obstacles that you're up against. And, you know, what I find, especially working a lot with trauma, I mean, those steps are only going to get you so far. It's more a matter of um, the internal stuff that's at work. And so this idea that, um, you know, as we shift in our being, that we are kind of transforming internally, we naturally go out and we show up differently. We don't really have to, you know, work as hard that now I need to think about doing one, two, and three. I'm naturally doing certain things because of the state in which I'm approaching my world from. And so this idea of, you know, um, even relationships, you know, sometimes when relationships start, we, we are investing into them and we're doing the work the state of that relationship looks different too. So the quality that you get from that relationship is different because of what it is in essence versus sometimes just doing the one, two, three things um, without real meaningful connection. And I think when we talk about this idea of, um, you know, social wellness, um, that really the focus is real meaningful connection that we're connecting and not losing that piece. So that's what I hear. That's what I imagine is required to make it 30, you know, plus years in a marriage or doing life with any person is you have to, you know, get to a place where you genuinely value, appreciate and respect this other human being. Right. I think the other thing is how to have tough conversations. 
I, I think it's not just necessary. I mean, we've had, Shannon and I have had some as business partners. And also yes. we've had some with guests on the show. Mm -hmm. And I think to in, in order to affect change, right? And especially to affect positive change, I think it's important that we learn the skills of having those deep, sometimes tough conversations mm -hmm. And um, I don't know where I'm going with that. It just really came up for me when you were talking. Mm -hmm. I was like, to be authentic, to be yeah. real, to be, well, that's how we started the darn podcast. Like we were having some of these conversations in our manifesting meeting. Yeah, and right. Shannon's like, I don't think most people have these conversations. Mm -hmm. And she was definitely, I don't think people our age, because we're of different generations <laughs> and are different. She's like, I don't think people have these conversations. We need to have more of these conversations. And so yeah. it's one of the seeds that started Women Connected to Wisdom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because especially as women, like, and we talk about this a lot, the different details on the podcast, right? We talk about authors. We used to have to write in pen names because women weren't allowed to publish books, right? We're talking about taxes and 1099s for royalties and what we need and figuring out new things based on policy updates. And a few years ago, women weren't allowed to have accounts. We weren't allowed allowed to own assets, you know. So just a, a change in the environment has dictated that, you know, we learn new things. And when we talk about where we live and the, the separation of education, and then you add in gatekeepers and people who don't want to share all the information that they know. So you have one, two, and three, and then seven, eight, and nine, and trying to figure out why you didn't get to the end of, of your goal and your dream and your launch. Mm -hmm. And so when we were having really effective conversations, you know, we had an amazing group of women at the table and the tables at Starbucks were only, but so big, you know, and we said, we need, we need more people to, I said, you know, there should be more people in these conversations. I know more women and families would benefit from some of these resources. And that's how we started. We started doing this, you know, but to go to the point of people feeling like they're not getting there. I was having this conversation earlier. When I think about it, I think about faith. I believe as a person, you're never going to be all the way there. You're never going to have everything where you can do it on your own. You're going to need God. That's how we're made, right? There's going to need that that extra bit to push you to the extra credit to where he, exceed ex, he exceed, exceeds expectations and um, things fall together, you know, and that's with him, with us doing our best. And something we were talking about also is a community, you know, so I would love for you to talk about community, Chanel, and how you help people heal as individuals, but also how we can do that in community to make what we're doing sustainable. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, even as you touch on that piece, I just to kind of piggyback on something you said, I definitely think all the time uh, that, you know, when I have it all together, that's probably when God's going to call me home. Right. So <laughs> if I'm now at a place where I have nothing else that I can necessarily contribute while I'm here on earth, that's probably when my, my journey is done. Mm -hmm. um, so I 100% agree that I think the journey is we're always continuing to evolve. We're always continuing to grow. Um, that's a part of this process. And the thing about it is this process involves other people. You know, we're not meant to do life in isolation. And we do need other people sometimes to be our mirror, to reflect back to us, you know, what is actually present. I know that um, sometimes it's very easy to feel like you have it all together when you do life by yourself. You do all the work. And if we kind of bring this into play with, you know, um, or in line with like therapy or coaching, yes. you're doing all the work as an individual. And, you know, you're like, hey, I've done taken all the steps. And so now I'm good. And so now I'm ready to venture back into relationship and do relationship. And then you get into relationship and you're like, wait, hold on. Everything that I, I all the work I put in. Maybe there's something wrong with this other individual that's causing all these things to stir up, mm -hmm. not recognizing that sometimes that's just a part of relationships. Like you said, Christine, do, having the difficult conversation, you know, really being able to bounce things back and forth between each other is how we grow. Um, so the idea of us growing and shifting and being, when we go back into our world, we're naturally impacting the environment because of where we are. 
internally. And that has an effect on the system, you know, relational system as a whole as well. So this piece is like, if you're doing the work in relationships also, it has this reciprocating effect that it's healing for us as individuals too. So either way, it's this circular thing that you're doing the work internally, individually, it has an impact on the system, the relationship, um, and all the relationships that you have, and then vice versa. If you're doing work in relationships and community alongside other people, that also has an effect on sometimes healing and supporting us as individuals. It's all connected. Yes. And conversations I was having last year is about, and I forget the order that it's in, but storming, forming and norming, right? The parts of developing a group of working together. So sometimes people feel like when there's a need for a difficult conversation or when there's frustrations and things come up, oh, that shows that we're doing something wrong. Well, no, that just shows that, like you said, you're taking this individual and then this individual and bringing them together. And they're, we're not identical twins and even identical twins are different, you know? Mm -hmm. And so it's just part of learning how to work better together. And so I count it as a win, you know, of learning how to have those conversations together because I have them differently with each of my business partners. And I have those conversations different with my romantic partner, you know, even with myself, you know, you hold those conversations differently. But when you don't do that, that's what I think about is what happens if you don't process stuff? You know, what happens if we don't unpack it and we don't get better next time? Well, then that's a huge liability. So having the frustration and the difficult conversation is not necessarily the liability. It's the opportunity cost of if we don't continue to get better and grow together. Mm-hmm. 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 Chanel, we love to give our listeners resources or tips or Things And I'm just sitting here thinking, if I was listening to this podcast today, knowing that you're a mental health and relationship coach, Mm -hmm. do you have, and I know every situation is different, right? But when you think about relationships, do you have some top things or things that you recommend for partners or people in relationships? Do you have some, you know, I think, I think one of the things like Shannon and I, as, as business partners, one of the things we do with each other is if we're starting to get stressed, we immediately take a deep breath. We're like, okay, pause, let's take a deep breath. Woo. Especially when we're working on things like accounting and taxes. And stuff like that. But I think about as a relationship coach, like mm-hmm. what is some of the advice you would give to somebody that was listening today? That's a good question. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's interesting because I feel like this is one of the areas where I approach it pretty similarly across the board. The difference um, that I would say is the details of every relationship are different, but some of the strategies or the interventions are pretty similar um, in the sense that most of the conversations and dialogue that we have, especially in our romantic relationships and people who are the closest to us, the conversation is more than just the words that we're using. And I think a lot of times we put all this focus on, you know, specifically language and we're missing that there's a whole conversation that is happening underneath the water. There's a whole conversation that's happening on a systems level. So when I support um, couples or if I'm talking to people about relationships, I'm trying to get them to cue in to what's happening on a systems level when you're interacting with your partner. So this idea that even as you said, hey, we take a deep breath, like when, yes, absolutely, because breathing um, really does something to our system to help kind of decompress us. So recognizing that what's showing up emotionally or whatever you're feeling in that moment, it shows up in your body and you can use your body also to support you. That's kind of where I start people Um, especially because my first profession is a licensed massage therapist and have been doing that for like, yeah, over like, uh, what, what is that? Maybe I started probably like 20 years ago, but got into it like over 15 now professionally and, um, the body and everything else are connected. So, uh, my advice would be someone who doesn't necessarily have the insight of what's happening on a systems level pay attention to what's happening in your body when you're having maybe a difficult conversation with your partner. 
And let's cue in and see if we can pick up on any sensory information that now gives us some insights to something that may be happening um, underneath the, the surface. And, you know, whether it's bringing in different strategies to kind of soothe and cope in that moment to connect, um, that's one way that we can help to regulate ourselves, but also to paying attention to your partner and paying attention to the, the uh, visible cues that we're seeing. Maybe the, their face has shifted a little bit and you're thinking that they're talking because of the words they're using out of anger and you pick up sadness on their face that can give you another insight to some of the uh, conversation that's happening underneath the surface. So um, I don't know, I hope that brings maybe some direction or some clarity that went into what I was saying, but um, yeah, definitely uh, dialogue happens on a systems level even before the verbal comes in. So can you go more into that? I hear you saying, it's not just what your verbal is, verbally saying, right? It can be body language. Can you go more in detail about what you mean when you say systems? Yeah, absolutely. Hey y'all, this is a great place to take a break, take a deep breath and hear from our awesome sponsors that make Women Connected and Wisdom podcast possible. Shannon, we are so grateful that Shayla Glow is the sponsor of the Women Connected in Wisdom podcast. And I wanted to take this moment to ask you, when you think about the people who use Shayla Glow, who are we talking about? Mm, that's a good question. I think about three groups, really. One, the group that's removing hair, right? So whether you're using laser hair removal, waxing, shaving, you got to make sure that you're putting back what you're taking out. The second group, I think about those with dry skin and the problems that that might cause, right? The scars, itching, burning, whatever the situation is, you definitely need all three steps, right? The exfoliation, making sure you're taking the dead skin cells off, the oil, putting in the, the moisture and then the shea butter with the aloe, sealing it, helping you heal those things help both groups, right? And third, for the third group is those with chronic illness. You know, the story is personally from cancer and different diseases that our population is dealing with on a daily basis throughout families as individuals. So I'm thinking about my mom and my grandmother and those around me with the same generational ties, right? And what positive healthy habits we can start to make sure that we're maintaining our wellness, especially because the skin is like the cape, the exterior, the, the shield for your immune system. So with COVID, we have to be intentional about covering ourselves. And those are the groups I think about. I love it. And you know what else I love about your product? It's all natural, handmade, yes. and it smells great, y'all. So yes, yay. Tested. <laughs> yes, <laughs> esthetician tested and approved. Yes. Yes. What about you? When you think about your company, what groups of people do you think about? Well, you know, I work with individual coaching clients. I work in community classes and with corporate teams. And with all of them, I use a strength-based embodied approach to help folks connect with themselves and access joy, reduce burnout, and build resilience. You know, especially during these times, I think we need it. I think we need all the hashtag partnership power we can get. <laughs> yes. So let's think about it when we were pre-verbal, okay? Like as infants. Infants have whole conversations with their caregivers um, or their parents, and they have no language. But there's some, a way that they relate to another human system. So when we're talking about system, we're talking about just like central nervous system, you know, the stuff that's, that's happening internally. Right. Um, that child can sense as an infant whether or not this is a safe space, if there's danger, if maybe there's, you know, something that's off. And they pick up on that and that shapes the way that they um, engage to try to get their needs met or, you know, with the rest of their environment. Mm -hmm. So this idea that, you know, uh, adults are just grown children. We are just grown children um, who've learned certain skills to be able to apply in life now. But when we are triggered or um, sometimes when we are most vulnerable, we go back to that state right. of, you know, that kind of like childlike place and um, learn how to uh, get our needs met from that place. So that's kind of what I'm saying when I say systems is what's happening internally that's maybe um, influencing the way that you're receiving this other individual 
or the communication um, because that can be a barrier sometimes to us really being able to connect. That makes sense. So when we, if we can shift from relationships, right, to healing, dreaming, and launching, somebody who is interested in that next project and they might be kind of nervous about it, what action step would you give them? Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, my approach that I take supporting people um, with getting to the place of uh, recognizing their dream is really um, being able to kind of come to the table, discern your natural abilities and um, kind of how you were created and designed. Um, The things that interest you, what are your natural gifts, uh, talents, the things that um, sometimes we overlook which it may be the way you look, the way you talk, the culture that you're a part of, who is drawn to you naturally just for those specific reasons and recognizing that that's also a part, it's an asset for you. Um, and to some degree may you know, be that thing that your gifts will make room for you. So being able to explore with that individual, uh, the first step to me is getting clear with identity. You can't really take a step into um, vision and real like purpose and passion apart from identity. You can make a lot of things happen in your life, but I don't believe in just, uh, I'm not the person that people go to if you're just trying to make, um, to launch into any endeavor that's not necessarily something that's based off of like purpose and passion, something that's innate. Because I find that that's the the way that you can um, support that the best is if this is something that's in you, that you would do it, even if, you know, you, uh, if nobody ever paid you for it, that this is something that you would still be drawn to doing. And then you find, like I said, um, you know, just that idea that like really your gifts make room for you and you can, um, you know, find yourself being able to make a living for yourself or, you know, create different opportunities based off of what you already have at your disposal. So I hope that answered, you know, to some degree is first thing is I'm, I'm working with people on getting clear about identity. Yes. And I love that because, you know, often, I mean, I think we take it for granted sometimes, especially those of us in this field who mm-hmm. are, are living into our purpose and we feel like we're on purpose. But there's a lot of people that struggle with that, that are like, what am I here to do and can't see? their gifts. So I love that you help them, that you reflect their gifts to them and, and help them sort that out. And I also know, you know, working with some of my clients and I'm sure you may have had this too. They also may lose it along the way because of crisis or age and stage or, you know, different times in your life. So I just want to say to anybody listening, like if you are older and you feel like, well, I should have already gotten this figured out, let go of those shoulds and don't should yourself and reach out if you're feeling lost uh, because, you know, there's people that can guide you on this. And I love that you do that, Chanel, with your clients. Yes. So we've talked about how you help other people. What do you do for yourself that helps keep you centered in the work that you help others with? Mm -hmm. You know, um, definitely I would say first and foremost, it's my faith. That has been the one consistent anchor throughout my entire life. You know, before I was married, before I had children, before I was wearing all the different hats, you know, um, I was a child of God and my relationship with, with God has been my anchor that everything else has kind of um, been funneled through that. It helped me find my own identity. Um, and just to kind of, you know, uh, piggyback on something you said, Christine, this idea that, uh, you know, stage of life, I don't believe that purpose is necessarily just like one thing. I think it can be like even fluid and change across the lifespan that, there's a different way that you can show up and maybe fuel purpose or some passion in life at any given um, you know, point in your, in your life. Um, but yes, really, I mean, I've been just been holding hands with the Lord and kind of walking through life and you know, being directed in this, this way or this way and uncovering new things about myself and you know, taking certain steps towards one profession or another 
and finding new passions and insights. And so um, my faith in the place of uh, even just like, you know, worshiping together as a community, that's a big thing because this is, you know, we're talking about the idea of community and being connected. Um, You know, my family is so central to me. We're very much rooted and grounded in like just togetherness and, you know, supporting each other. And I'm very blessed and fortunate to have that. And so, um, you know, speaking of like, you know, my immediate family, but also like my parents, you know, I'm blessed that both of my parents are still around. I have sisters who I'm very, very close with. My oldest sister, um, extremely close with her. And she has been like a mentor throughout a, a large part of my life. And so, you know, friendships, fostering that, fostering family relationships and family ties, spending time, you know, in my personal world. And I think, uh, Christian, I heard you when I was back behind stage, this idea of like, sometimes the recharge is being able to be with your, you know, tribe of people, your community, right. that it, right. it does something for you. So for me, I'm, I'm a simple person. I don't like to overcomplicate <laughs> things. <laughs> so the community I have that inspires and uplifts me and then my faith, honestly. Right. But that's so real. When you talk about social wellness, I I think today in the Instagram world, like Mm -hmm. often people think, oh, you've got to have this or you have to be out at this party or you have to be out at this concert or you, you know, and some of that is fun. I don't want to discount that because I've been to some really good concerts and to some really good parties. So I don't want to discount it. Right. Yes. But when I really get down to my social wellness, it is my connections in deep and authentic relationships Mm -hmm. with people I love. And it could be playing pickleball with them on a Sunday afternoon, as silly as that is, right? Or having a cup of tea with somebody. Um, But it doesn't have to be, when you said you're simple, Chanel, I like, me too, Like it is literally the simple things that probably bring my heart more joy. Um, And I've, I'm so lucky my life that I've gotten to do some really incredible things. But when I really think about true wellness, it's, you know, hanging out with my people and being content. Yeah. And when I think about, why people get upset and why all this stuff happens. That's really what they're trying to get to in, as well, right? They're upset about the money. You're spending all these hours at work for the money so that your house is there when you get back, you know, so that your child can go to the school that you you picked for them and you chose for them intentionally or whatever the reasons are. You know, I, I don't know if I've seen a situation where it doesn't boil down to that at the end of the day. So, yeah, I love it. So every week, We do a wisdom in action, right? Because we know that it's not enough to just know all these amazing things. Therapy is needed, all these things, but you have to act on it, right? Actually go to therapy, actually have the difficult conversations. What are you doing this week, Chanel, for yourself, for your social wellness? Mm, You know, I think that's a good question. You know, I've, I think this week I've been pressing in a lot deeper into, um, just kind of like my spiritual recharge, um, feeling a little off and recognize that when, especially when you're in a service oriented field, you have to, uh, pour from what you have. And if I'm depleted, then I don't have, you know, anything really to give. So for myself, I have to get connected to a higher source or a source higher than myself so that I can be recharged and be able to, you know, actually produce something greater. So for me, I'm doing like a reset and really um, trying to get more grounded and rooted with some faith practices throughout this week. I love it. I'm right there with you. I hear what you're saying. If I had to say a wisdom and action I mean, I love it. And you know, Christine, you know, it's hard for me to just pick one. So I have like go five for two over here. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, go <laughs> for more. If you need more this week, right. go for it. So I'll tell you the two, the three that I have at the bottom of this page. Okay. At the bottom of my notes are continue to evolve, right? Fuel purpose. I love that. I really feel like that's what I help. I'm an encourager too. We talked about it, right? Like fueling people's purpose. I love that. Um, and 
hold hands with the Lord. I feel like in times when I feel like I lost myself, like that is the anchor, you know? So Mm -hmm. just remembering that, um, you know, you're always growing. You can help other people grow and to do it from a certain place. That's where I am right now when I think about social wellness. Mm -hmm. What about you, Christine? Thank Mm -hmm. you. Well, I'm thinking about one of my people. I'm a week and a day away from one of my people studying abroad. And Mm -hmm. so she won't be in my house for six months. And so what was coming up for me, and I don't know how to hashtag it, but I was thinking about how much I love just spending time with my people. So Mm -hmm. I need to create more space this week because I literally have seven days. And so I need to, um, my work schedule has been a little nuts. And um, I'm a little out of balance with work and relaxation time. So my hashtag is create more space so I can play some games and drink some tea and go for some walks and just be intentional about that time for the next week. And if I could give you one of my affirmations and usually it's for the day, right? Is I have the time that I need to do everything I need to do. So. You have the time. Oh, you know, I expand time. That's my other hashtag. Expand time. Write it down. uh, (laughs) I love that. And that's what I love about being intentional about it. Because when you're intentional Mm -hmm. and you create the space and you're saying, what do I want? And you really look at it. Absolutely. Things are exponentiated. You know, they exceed expectations. So thank you so much for your time, Chanel. It's been a pleasure talking Mm -hmm. with you. Yes, you guys as well. Thank you so much for having me. I really enjoyed the conversation. Yes. We are so delighted. And hey, Chanel, I'm planning to get to Houston sometime this year. Um, So I would love to meet in person. Mm -hmm. Yes, Shannon, thank you for posting the (laughs) wholewomancoaching.com. Oh, thank goodness. you. And we will put that link in our show notes so people can connect with you. And okay. um, yeah, just so delighted. And thank you for your work in the world. Amazing. Absolutely. Thank you both as well for this platform and for all that you're doing. And I hope to connect with both of you guys in person sometime soon. Yes, right? that would be amazing. <laughs> Come visit us in ATL. We're not no. much warmer than Houston. Right now, <laughs> but you know. I'll wait. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so fun. Oh my goodness. So fun. I love talking about therapy and stuff, you know, especially with a psychology background. I tell people Mm -hmm. that it's like you breaking your leg and you just went home. Like you go see somebody, things happen. (laughs) It's okay to talk about it. You know, like let's reset it. Let's make sure we're healthy. I was thinking about during that conversation, I mean, you know, I love tools and resources and different Mm -hmm. modalities. And I was thinking about that beautiful conversation we just had with Chanel and then the conversation we had with our coffee and chat person. Yes. And really thinking about how many resources and tools are literally almost at our, they're at our fingertips nowadays. Yes. And if you're overwhelmed or or seeking, there are people to help you. There's people to help sort through like Chanel to figure out, okay, this is your purpose or this is what you're attracting. And because I know it can be overwhelming. I mean, I think about just scrolling through Instagram can be overwhelmed. Do this, do that. (laughs) Are you a, no, I'm not. (laughs) Yes, I am though, but I'm going to keep scrolling, you know? Yeah. (laughs) I'm going to take it. I mean, shoot just the recipes nowadays. I'm like, Lord, I want to cook them all. I don't want to cook any of them. I don't know. (laughs) Yes. Information overload, right? But I just think about, I just think about really this time we're living in and how lucky we are that we can be connected and that we can have these resources. And speaking of connection, yes, you and I, before we jumped on and probably will be live um, by the time this airs tonight, tonight um, is our new LinkedIn group. Women Connected in Wisdom, we want to invite you to be in community with us. If you are a listener, if you have been a guest, if you, you know, just found us, um, head over to LinkedIn and type in Women Connected in Wisdom group and uh, join us over there because we're going to continue some of the conversations from the podcast. 
we're going to have days or posts. We're figuring all that out where we uplift um, people in our community and the work they're doing in the world. And is there anything else you want to say about it, Shannon? Yeah. Like if you're like, okay, well, and I, I, I am this person sometimes, right? Oh, it's not for me. I wouldn't write yourself off so quick, right? If you're mm-hmm. a seeker, like she said, if you're looking for a resource, you're looking for something in one of the dimensions that you feel like you can get better in, it's for you, right? We have tailored mm-hmm. resources. This is episode 144. So we have a list of experts in each area for you, right? If you're a sharer, if you have amazing resources and stories like Chanel, and you know you want to help people who are looking for their purpose, looking for whatever tool that you have that you specifically made out of your story and you and you saw the need for it, come talk to us. Come see if we can help uplift your resource and help you share it, you know? And um, like you said, you know, I know I always want to continue the conversation of the podcast. So if you want to talk about Chanel's episode, this is what we're going to do on the page and meet us there. Right. I also think about, I mean, you know, this is episode 144 and we have some episodes that you and I literally still reference Mm -hmm. from a year ago, two years ago. And we'll say, oh, so and so, like, we're hoping they join us at this and then you can have direct conversations with them. So I'm delighted and excited. Is there anything else our listeners need to know about? I don't think so. If if this is your first time listening, though, and you don't know about our conference, we do have the second annual summit coming up. It's going to be at the end of February. So join us. We'll have the authors from volume two. We have 12 authors speaking mm-hmm. about intentional dimensional wellness. It's going to be a really good time over two days. And we look forward to seeing you there. Right. And yeah. we do still have a couple of spots open for sponsors. We do. If you are interested in uh, partnering with us yes. and having an opportunity to speak at the conference, also reach out. You yes. can reach out at Women Connected in Wisdom Podcast uh, at gmail.com. And we'll put it in the show notes and just, you know, so grateful to be connected. Yes, me too. Okay, guys, we'll see you here live at five next week. In the meantime, don't forget, be well, be wise, and be whole. We'll see you soon. Peace. Thanks for listening. This has been the Women Connected in Wisdom podcast. On air live on Wednesdays at 5 p.m. Eastern via Facebook and YouTube. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Be part of the conversation and get connected at womenconnectedinwisdom.com.